Welcome back to part two of this marathon effort to stucco the bedrooms. Stucco is applied in layers. The first layer is the scratch coat, and it helped a lot with smoothing out the walls, covering the lath, and then setting up a good base for the next layer. You can see that we literally scratched the stucco on the walls, so the following layer would stick to it. The scratch coat part was in an earlier video. This video is about applying the second coat, which most professionals would call the brown coat. In these first couple clips, you can see that I'm patching some remaining issues before I really get rolling on a nice uniform brown coat. I really wanted to smooth out these corners, but you can only add so much thickness at a time. Then my parents and sister came to visit and we got started on the actual brown coat. We're starting on the back wall of what will be the laundry room and therefore the room that visitors are least likely to see. And again, a disclaimer, my videos are really much more about how we dealt with the challenges of building our earth sheltered house. If you want how-to videos about doing stucco on a normal house, keep searching. Well. Watch this first, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell, maybe comment, share it with at least three friends, perhaps via your favorite social media site, and then keep searching. There are a lot of good YouTubers out there who do stucco, such as Kurt Giordano. I'll link to a couple of them in the doobly-doo. The best I can do here is point out how and why we did things a little bit differently on our specific construction. Here I'm working with my sister and my son, and this stucco is going up pretty quickly. Normally you would use a darby to make it plainer, but we can't really do that because the walls are too curvy. So we're using pool floats with rounded corners, and it's getting that more organic look. So far, so good for our first afternoon. Actually, considering how long it took us to scratch coat this area, I was pretty impressed with our pace. But we didn't quite leave enough time in that day for the hard rubber float step. The next day, after my family left, Sherry and I came back with a hard rubber float. We had done this in an earlier project, that video here, bing, and we were able to smooth the stucco really well even several days later, but that wasn't really the same stucco formulation. Here it was definitely not working. After some frustration, we decided to back up and just do the brown coat on this wall all over again. In addition to fixing the texture, I had hoped it would also allow us to further flatten out this wall. I like to think it must have helped in terms of flatness, but the walls still look blotchy. But we'll continue with the redo. Then I moved on to a new room with slightly better skills and still hoping we would figure out that second step along the way. Basically, I'm hoping that the work would teach us how. My best tip so far is this bucket idea. Put your bucket on an upside down bucket to reduce your bending over. One of our constraints is that we're not really doing this full time. We can't apply stucco in the morning, then wait a few hours for just the right time and then try to rubber float it. Instead, we're getting out there after work in the evening, trying to get in a few hours work, then get home and put our kids to bed. This worked fine for the scratch coat, but it doesn't leave us with the right window of time for the rubber float. On the other hand, there were pleasant evenings working together. We had some good laughs and got some exercise.
For this section of wall, I overwet the wall before getting going with the stucco, and that river of water was still rolled, flowing down in that one section. So we had to slow down, and then eventually I could cover it. It was pretty fun to spray the walls and get the mist going. But here, the practical purpose was to try to soften up the previous day's stucco so I could rubber float it. And again, you see the weird texture patching and sandy patches. So I decided to try to wash that off, and then that only made things worse. Here on this wall, I decided to try to rubber float it too soon just within a few hours of putting up the stucco. And you can see that the stucco was too soft. So I was getting patches where it was rubbing off the brown coat completely. It sounds bad, but I actually kind of liked it better than anything we've done so far. So I carved a date near the bottom of this wall and decided to leave it that way. Still, I haven't figured out how to get the finish we want, but we had no choice but to press on. The ceilings in this area, at least in the hallway on the left side there, will be hidden behind a false ceiling eventually, but we still wanted them to be as nice and smooth as possible. Here the boys are mixing up one of the last batches of sand. We're running out, but that's okay, because Sherry really wanted to buy the smoother premix sucker bags anyway, so I ordered some. The premix bags were delivered and then left at the end of our driveway, so I was very glad to have that big skid steer strong enough to bring in those pallets. Just some fun with spraying hot water on the cool walls. Keeping the stucco wet while it's curing really helps make it stronger. Plus, it's fun and it warms up the whole place, which is nice in the middle of winter. In this scene, we're trying the soft sponge trick. We had still left it overnight to cure up a bit, but I hoped that the sponge could better handle the organic curvature of the walls and the fact that it was wet would soften them as we rubbed it. It looked okay, but after 20 hours of curing, it took a lot of effort to rub the walls. Back to stuccoing and discussing how we can finish it. Sherry wanted to try floating it right away before the walls got hard and difficult. But I'd already had bad luck with that, so Sherry thought that maybe the problem was me. So just a short time after putting up the stucco, Sherry got the float and a bucket of water and tried smoothing it down. She had to be very gentle to avoid rubbing it off. It sort of worked, but the float was still designed for a flat wall and it was giving that weird texture effect where it was hitting the high points and not the low points. So then Sherry dumped the float part and just started using the sponge. That was starting to look good for once, and by not waiting too long, everything was still soft enough that it wasn't too strenuous to get it to work. Then Sherry had to go home with the kids and left me to try to do the same for this wall that I just stuccoed. I worked on something else for a couple hours and then came back. Gentle is not my strong suit, but it was sort of working. 
However, I decided it was still too sandy at the end and I tried that water trick again to hose it down and that really just washed off too much of the cream and made it look bad. So we finally have a good plan for that second step. Sherry will do it. Using a stucco sponge just a couple hours after the stucco goes up, it works for our time frame on our curvy organic walls and gives us a somewhat uniform and repeatable texture. We figured out a plan that works for us and we're only halfway through the bedrooms. You don't get much footage of that because Sherry doesn't like the GoPro very much, uh, but here are some still pictures. If you put up too much stucco on a ceiling, it will fall down. And thanks to our sticky thin set added to the mix, it also pulls down what's next to it, etc. An example of this happens in three, two, a moment to reflect, and then put up new stucco. Here's the replay so you can feel our pain again. Sherry figured out how to sponge gently enough to follow me pretty closely so he could leave at the same time. I would clean out the wheelbarrow, etc. as she finished up sponging. Note, she's wearing some pretty heavy rubber gloves to keep the caustic stucco cream off her hands, but sometimes it did dribble off her arm and down and burn her elbow, so she had to adjust her technique elbows up, etc. to avoid that also. Well, we saved our best skills for the master bedroom again, and it was definitely our best footage. But it was all lost somehow. So you can take a look at these nice still pics. Those brown lines always form at the edges of our stucco patches. Ideally, you want to stucco a whole wall all at once to avoid that. But again, we just didn't have that kind of time frame. So we plan to just worry about a unified coat for the next layer. I'm happy just to make sure that there's no texture change between the patches and Sherry's blending things together pretty well. For those of you who want to get into more details about how we manage certain challenges, please jump to our webpage for a gallery of pics. Spring is coming and the next video shows some of those in-between tasks before we get cranking on putting up the steel arches for the radio vaults.